Cucumbers with Anxiety, Chapter 2. Ding dong! I slowly opened the front door. You know, you don't have to shout ding dong at my house for me to open for you. I said with a face thoroughly buried in my hand. I rang the doorbell, but you didn't respond. I was in the shower. I didn't even know you were coming. I didn't even want you to come. Would it kill you to call ahead? If I called ahead, you would have told me you're not here. Besides, how was I supposed to know that you take showers? He said with a sneaky grin. I gave a dry, sarcastic laugh. I do take showers, you know. My appearance last night should be no indication of my hygiene care habits. You caught me at a bad time and dragged me out of the house. You can't judge me for that. Yes, I can. Why are you here, anyway? Alex's face dropped at the question, and his lip gave a forced quiver. On the defensive again, Laura? After we had such a lovely time last night? Last night was the furthest thing from lovely. You made me laugh once, which is some kind of trophy for you for some reason. Other than that, it was quite dry. I hung on the door, purposefully blocking the way into the house. Ah, but you did laugh once, didn't you? He said with a smile so broad it almost stretched past the confines of his face. I shrugged. Yeah, bravo. You made me laugh. You want a cookie? I asked sarcastically. Alex's face lit up. Yes, I'd love a cookie. I stared at him with a blank expression for a few seconds, working through several layers of surprise, anger, and irritation. I don't have cookies. What? Then why the hell would you tease me like that? You build me up just to burn my aspirations to the ground. That might be the meanest thing you've done to me so far. And all this after I brought you a present? A switch in my mind finally flipped and I realized what was off about this picture. Alex was keeping one hand behind his back the whole time. Oh no, Alex, you didn't. His smile returned in all its breadth, and I felt like I lost a game I didn't know I was playing. His name is Peter. That's a terrible name for a dog. Alex produced from behind him a puppy that seemed to be drowning in its own skin. An English bulldog, my favorite breed. My heart skipped several beats as I took in every cute feature that the puppy had to offer. The pink on the bridge and around his nose. His tiny paws that kept searching for purchase while he was floating mid-air. And, just because the universe exists to spite me, at that very moment, it yawned. My heart felt like it was going to explode in my chest. My knees wobbled and shook beneath me, threatening to deliver my body to the ground. It may be the most immeasurably cute thing I have seen in my life. I want to hold it to my chest and surround it. I want to keep it safe from the cold world. I want to play with it all day and fall asleep with it snoring silently on my chest. I don't want it, I said to Alex and almost passed out from the effort. Effort to keep my voice steady instead of broken and biting back tears. Effort to keep my expression blank instead of wide-eyed with desperate gasps for air. I want it with every fiber in my being. I want it so much, but I can't have it. It deserves better than me. If it stays with me, I won't have the energy to play with it, to give it the attention it deserves. It will grow up lonely and unhappy, and I cannot allow that. It deserves a better life than it can have with me. Muffin can stay with you. I'll come visit. I finally got out after the last internal tears had dissipated. His name is Peter, and he's your dog. This is his home. He's staying here, Alex said as he handed it to me despite my protests. I finally took it and my hands touched the softest fur on the planet. Its fat belly rested on my forearm and it seemed to hold on to me with its paws. Its chin came to rest on my palm and it almost drifted to sleep. How did it feel so calm and comfortable with me holding it? It seemed to give up all protest it put up a second ago while Alex was holding it. I looked down and my heart swelled. Fine, but if it's staying with me, then I'm calling it Muffin. I finally whispered. A whisper was all I could manage, and I dearly hoped Alex wouldn't pick up on it. His name is Peter! He told me so himself! 
Alex protested with fervor. It did not tell you anything. It's a dog. I felt like I was explaining this to a toddler instead of a highly intelligent man that masqueraded expertly as a toddler. Yes, he did. Alex stepped forward and gave it a few scratches behind its ear. What's your name, boy? He cooed. The dog looked up at him and barked twice. See? Peter! Alex exclaimed. Two barks. Could also be Muffin, I retorted. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's an English bulldog. You're not English. You can't understand him. You're not English either, idiot. I sighed. No, but my grandmother spent a vacation in England once, so yeah. I stared at him blankly for a few seconds, then decided to give up. I told you, you're buying the food, I said instead. Alex smiled in response. Already did, he said and stepped aside to reveal a towering bag of dog food slouching halfway up my walkway. Holy hell, how did you fit that in your excuse for a car? Alex snorted. The X-Mobile doesn't just look like a sports car every 13-year-old boy dreams of. It is also very functional for transporting the luggage of a medium-sized family, mountains of dog food, or even the bodies of those who had wronged you. Ask your doctor about how the X-Mobile could enhance your life today! I ignored Alex's infomercial voiceover as I was still stunned that he actually bought enough dog food for the dog and all of his descendants. I didn't actually think you'd buy it food, I muttered. I felt a little guilty. I, of course, wouldn't dream of not taking the absolute best care of any pet living with me. I'm just not sure if Alex was being kind or he thinks I'm so far gone that I can't take care of a dog. Well, I kind of joked that I would, and then I felt like I should, because I said that I would. Alex seemed to rationalize it more for himself than for me. I instantly knew that he meant it, though. Alex, while being immensely complex, is also strikingly simple in the sense that he really does follow his own logic, and he rarely lies about how he thinks. Alex spun on his heel and started inspecting the bag from all angles most likely trying to figure out how he's going to get it up the two steps in front of my porch. He had dragged it to its current position from his car, as evidenced by the scrape marks on my walkway, the clumps of grass strewn about next to the walkway, and the newly formed pothole right behind Alex's car. Just put it in my kitchen, I instructed as I wandered into my house. He shouted some form of acquiescence back that I couldn't make out. The dog comfortably rested upon my forearm and seemed to follow along the process as I made coffee with one functional hand. I can already see what a fashionable accessory it would make. The process was soundtracked by constant grunts and expirations from Alex, trying to move a bag of dog food that was taller than himself. I finished making coffee and went to spectate Alex's misery. I arrived just in time to see Alex's feet scrape against a concrete walkway and give out under him. He went down with a thud and I snorted. Not funny, Alex got out between breaths. The slouching bag toppled over and came down upon Alex like an avalanche, despite his squeals of protest. Very funny, I replied between giggles. I spent the next few minutes peering at Alex through the steam of my coffee, with a sleeping pop on my arm, as he desperately tried to get the bag up two steps. He tried rolling it at first, which I could have told him was a vain effort, but it was a lot funnier to watch him getting it up the first step, have a single moment of victory, than watching it roll down again. After nearly 10 minutes of trying, and seemingly the hardest mental calculation she ever had to do, the bag was on my porch. After another 10 minutes of altering between yanking and pushing the bag, it finally stood proud in my kitchen. Alex was sweating profusely and looked as if his legs might fail him at any moment. I stepped back and admired the bag like a fine piece of probably pretentious artwork. You know what? I actually think I want this out back, I said finally. Oh, come on, Alex got out between heaving breaths. I'll open the door for you, I said and headed down the hallway. I could only hear a desperate sigh and the rustling of the bag and had to stifle a cruel laugh. The tiles in the hallway seemed to giveth and taketh favors to dear Alex. The bag glided easier over the dusty floor, but so did Alex's feet, which means he hit the ground far more often. 
The bag would pull along pictures on the wall, so I had to follow close by to prevent Alex from getting cursed by my ancestors. Another sweaty and grunt-filled ten minutes later, Alex leaned the bag against the house next to the back door. The house audibly groaned in protest. Alex's breath made vapor clouds, which was quite impressive as this was a summer's day. No, I said after inspecting the glorious bag once more. Alex turned to me slowly, his eyes pleading tearily. I'm going to feed the dog in the kitchen, so I'd want it in the kitchen. A high-pitched, non-verbal exclamation was all that Alex could muster. It was quite an annoying sound, though I still prefer it to his voice. This time it took 20 minutes, and me waking up passed out Alex twice, before the bag was back in the dent it left in the kitchen floor. I'm... I'm gonna... Alex tried while vaguely pointing toward the living room, into which he stumbled before promptly throwing himself down on my favorite couch. I walked over and knelt down next to him. Please don't draw on my couch, I said. It's my favorite couch, the only one I use. None of my words were making it through to him. He was halfway there, probably playing a game of chess with a grim reaper for his soul. Yeah, that's what you get, I muttered. Dragging me out of my house with no rhyme or reason, you can expect some wrath. I sat down on the red chair next to the couch and closer to the front door. It was cold and reluctant, not as used to my butt as the TV-aligned couch was. I suddenly felt something hot and sticky on my fingers. Ah, the pup was awake. It looked at me pleadingly. You probably want to do some exploring, don't you? I said while gently lowering it to the floor. Its legs started walking before its feet found purchase, but the moment they did, the dog was off. It ran to Alex first and gave his cheek two short licks. It stopped immediately after tasting what must be one sweaty cheek. It walked over to the slutty coffee table and raised his leg. An immediate and shrill sound of disapproval from myself made it rethink that course of action. It trotted into the kitchen instead. The moment he disappeared from my view, Alex jerked awake, seemingly revitalized. Had a nice nap, I scoffed. I did, actually, yeah. He replied while looking around the room. He got up and walked towards the bookshelf at the back. Can you kindly leave now? I asked. No thanks, he replied absentmindedly. My mind struggled at the response for a few seconds. I wasn't really ask- Really? He scowled at me while holding a book. What? You read this filth? They're called romance novels and they're beautiful, I defended. You disgust me he said while turning up his nose. It did not make him seem dignified as he did it with his finger. Women all over the world read them. Women all over the world need better taste. I wouldn't mind them, but it's amazing how terribly they're written. Can't you be sexually attracted to good grammar? He got me. I was tired, but he got a chuckle out of me there. Just because you don't have the emotional depth to understand romance doesn't give you the right to rebuff those who do. Please! I have tremendous emotional depths. I once felt two things at once. Was one of them tired? I prodded. Yes, he admitted. Was the other one hungry? Yes! You can't tell me that's not emotional turmoil. I want to sustain my life, but my natural lethargy was keeping me from it. I was torn between life and death. Put that in your stupid novels. Please leave my house. No, he replied, and put down the fifth book he picked up and grimaced at. He apparently saw all he wanted to see in this room and headed for the kitchen. You poke around my house like a dog. If more people acted like dogs, the world would be a better place. His voice echoed out of the kitchen. I decided to follow him. I mean, it's not like I'm hiding anything. I'm just not comfortable with non-dog beings poking around my stuff. He wasn't in the kitchen. I didn't hear his footsteps anywhere. I instinctively knew where he was. I raced up the stairs and into my bedroom. He stood in front of my closet with one of my olive green dresses laid against his body. Do you think I'd look good in a dress? He asked with his eyes steady on the mirror. No, but then again I don't think you look good in anything else, I replied, trying to come up with a strategy to get him out of my room. You're such a flirt, 
he said and stuck his tongue out at me. Did you really mean what you said? I asked. He stared at me blankly. No. I don't think you're a flirt, he clarified. Not that, moron. Do you think we should all act more like dogs? He took a bra out of my closet. Yes, I really do, he replied while pressing my bra against himself. He did a 360 in front of the mirror. What's it like having boobs? I... It's fine, I guess. Why, though? I was just wondering. If I had them, I would push them again. Please don't finish that sentence. Please don't ever finish that sentence. I was still on the dog thing. Why do you think people should act more like dogs? Alex paused. Dogs just... Love. He finally said. It's one of the few times I saw Alex think before he spoke and struggled to find the right words. If you treat them with kindness, they will love you. They don't scheme, they don't judge, they don't want to conquer or dominate. They just want to live, to play. Dogs don't understand the world well enough to scheme and to judge. We do. And what has all this understanding brought us? Is it really worth it? Is having a smartphone worth all the anxiety and depression we work through on a daily basis? You say dogs don't understand. I think they might be the ones who do. But hey, that's just my opinion. It's also my opinion that this is a slutty dress. He had taken a dress out of the closet and stared at me through it. It's not slutty. Just because it's black doesn't mean it's slutty. I can literally see you through this dress. It's so short too, it looks like a shirt. He muttered and laid it against himself to prove his point. That's not a fair comparison. You're much taller than me. I got defensive about a dress I've never worn. Barely covers anything. And what it does cover, it covers barely. Alex said and grinned at his own wordplay. Yeah, well, I never wear it. Haven't worn it once. Why not? Why do you think? Well, when you do wear it, pair it with your best underwear because nobody is not going to see it he said, and I punched him in the shoulder. He feigned pain, but I think I hurt my hand more than I hurt him. He's not a muscle head, but he's hit the gym before, or at least carried around a huge bags of dog food before. Why did you get me a dog, Alex? I whispered. Because you can't hate him. People hate dogs all the time. No, you can't hate him. It's not in your heart to treat Peter badly. You'll treat him well, and he'll love you in response. You're in a place where you want to hate everything and everyone, but you'll never get it over your heart to hate him. And the next time you're on that downward spiral and your mind is just throwing you reasons to slip, he will be there. And no matter how hard you protest, he'll be your little reminder that you can't hate everything. Alex let the silence hang between us for a few seconds while his uncharacteristically steady eyes regarded me. Also, we're going out on Friday, and you're wearing this dress. Um, no? I bought that dress on an impulse. There is no chance in hell that I'm ever wearing that going out. Also, I'm not going out. Not falling for that one again. Alex seemed to deflate, but I knew he was far from letting it go. Bark! We both turned toward the door to see a wagging tail and a panting tongue standing in the doorway. Hey, little guy! Alex walked towards him and picked him up. The stairs must have given you some trouble, didn't they? He coaxed. The dog licked his cheek in response. Alex turned the dog toward me. Now, this is your mother. Her name is Emma. No, it isn't. She doesn't want to go out with me because she hates me. He said and pointed the dog's paw toward me accusingly. I don't hate you, I just don't feel like going out, I protested, suddenly feeling guilty before the scorn of a dog, which wasn't even real. You see, not only does she hate me, she hates everyone. She wants to be alone and miserable. Would you please shut up? I snapped, feeling some sick kind of shame. Alex responded by raising the dog in front of his face and speaking in a high-pitched voice. Please go out with a handsome man, mommy. I just know you'll have a good time. He is so very charming and good looking. You can't use his cuteness to control me, that's unfair, I replied. Alex peeked out from behind the dog. Ah, you think I'm cute? I was talking about the dog. You're about as cute as a splinter underneath your fingernail. 
Alex grimaced and masked his face with the dog again and donned his puppy impersonation voice. But Kate? Nope. Patricia? Wrong. Dot? Dot? Really? Alex peeked out from behind his fur mask. I'm sticking with that one. Just come with me on Friday. All the kids will be out on Friday. You'll be in good company then, I jabbed. Good jab! But I've already won. You see this dog? You see how cute he is? Every time you look at him, you'll think of me. Every time these precious eyes look at you, you'll remember how nicely I asked you to accompany me on Friday. Slowly, over time, the fur and the cuteness will invade your mind, he said as if he was narrating War of the Worlds. Eventually, you'll say yes. Good luck with that, I replied stoically. Alex scoffed and turned towards the pup. Good luck, she says. I've never needed luck. I have charm and these dashing good looks. Don't you agree? Bark. What? How dare you say that to me? Alex replied and softly tumbled the dog onto my bed, which he then playfully wrestled with. The dog growled and tried to bite Alex's hands as they tickled his belly and sides. A short yelp from Alex told me that he got a good bite in. Alex switched strategies and instead covered the pup in thick duvet. He lifted the duvet and clumsy legs tried to launch a bite at Alex, but it was met by an avalanche of duvet descending upon it once more. Alex repeated the process a couple times, the squeals and growls from the dog becoming more and more desperate. I leaned my back against the closet and watched the two animals play. It finally got a good bite on Alex's knee, who shrieked in surprise. Well now I'm gonna bite you back! Alex declared war and lowered his face to get revenge. It responded by jumping on top of Alex's head. Alex flailed his arms, trapped under the puppy's mighty weight. Oh no! He got me! He got me! Help me, fair maiden! Alex pleaded with a hand outstretched towards me. I looked at it, then back at him. Dot! Please! Dot! I don't know who that is, I shrugged. Alex sighed and removed the dog from his head, who promptly licked his fingers. She didn't even try to help me, he confided in the dog. Even with how empty her life would be without me, she didn't even try. This is not the dot I know. I am definitely not the dot you know because I am not... I stopped, because Alex twisted his face into a contortion even uglier than his normal face. Do your pillows have feathers in them? He wheezed. Yeah, why? I asked, moments before Alex sneezed on the dog. The dog responded by sneezing back on Alex. My back hit my closet as I burst out laughing. Not funny, Alex said with his eyes closed, as there was a light coat of dog mucus all over him. The dog only panted happily. Very funny, I got out. Alex put the dog down and stumbled to the bathroom. I pet the dog for his good behavior as Alex washed his face. The dog accepted his reward gracefully before running out of the room in search of a new adventure. Alex emerged out of the bathroom. Well, I do actually have to go. Oh, thank God. Mental note. If you get a dog to sneeze on Alex, he will leave. While that is not necessarily false, I actually have an appointment. Alex replied while walking past me. I followed. You have a what? An appointment. Two or more people agree to meet at a specific place at a specific time for a specific reason. Usually, but not exclusively, for business reasons. Alex replied and I got a sudden urge to kick him down the stairs. I know what appointment means. You just don't strike me as the kind of person that knows what the time is, let alone have the mental organization to set an appointment. My mental faculties can be very organized, sometimes for even hours a week. Well, I'm impressed. And I hope that you are granted this temporal mental alignment for whatever your meeting is about, I said and Alex stopped at my front door. I'm buying a jumping castle, Alex said. I stood silent for a couple of seconds. For a brief second there, I thought you were an actual person. I finally whispered, my newfound appreciation instantly shattered. Well, that was stupid, he said. I held the door open for him as he walked past me and suddenly spun on his heel. Hug! He cried as he embraced me. My body went stiff as his arms squeezed me against him. 
He released me and stepped through the door while I was still shocked to silence. Goodbye, Lizzie. Oh, for the love of... The door slammed shut between us. The sound of the slam echoed through the house for what seemed like minutes. I heard him walking down the hallway, getting in his car and driving off. Only when the feeble roar of his engine died away did I realize that I was still staring at the door he left through. I turned around and faced an empty house, which felt a little emptier than before. A little hollower. Most of my heart was relieved to be alone again. I wandered into the living room and slammed into the couch. It welcomed me back gracefully, but it was tainted. Alex's scent lingered. It's like when someone adjusts the seat in your car and you're not quite sure if it will ever feel right again. I rolled over on my back to get away from Alex's scent. I stared at the white ceiling, which now seemed like it was missing something, until I fell asleep. I felt tiny paws on my chest and opened my eyes to a large black nose in my face. Well, it wasn't large, just very close. The dog was sniffing me curiously. What do you want? Bark? I don't speak bark. Bark? Are you hungry? Bark? I'll have to take that as a yes, I replied as I got up. The dog leaped off me and watched me expectantly. The presence of the bag of dog food was intimidating. It'll take a while to get used to the slouched monstrosity greeting me each time I enter the kitchen. I'll have to figure out a plan of attack to slay this beast, or at least maim it. This will be told for generations as the new David and Goliath story. I decided that getting on the kitchen counter and scooping up dog food from above would be the ideal solution. I had to move two bowls and a rubber ball before I did though. And this was when I realized that Alex had also bought two bowls and a rubber ball. One of the bowls had food written on the side, the other water. Other than these inscriptions, the bowls were indistinguishable, which made me wonder why the distinction was necessary. In a couple of minutes, there was a hole in the top of the bag, a bowl of food and a bowl of water on the floor of the kitchen and a little dog that was attacking the bowl of food with fury. I sank to the cold tiles and sat down next to the dog to watch it eat. The crunching of dog pellets filled the house for a while before the dog seemingly had enough. It spun around on the floor as if it had never been in the room before. It barked and made a beeline for the opposite corner, then trotted back to me with a massive smile on its face. It took me a few seconds to realize that it wasn't smiling, but had a rubber ball in its mouth. The pup struggled with me for a few seconds before I took it. Bark! Relax, I'm going to throw it. It's a game. I explained before lazily bouncing the ball on the floor. The dog shot after it and ran underneath its bounce a couple of times before it was low enough to grasp in the dog's mouth. It sat down and started chewing on it. Okay, now you're supposed to bring it back to me, I called to it. It ignored me. Muffin? I cooed. I still got ignored. Dog? Spot? Scamp? Buster? Please? Anything? I tried but the dog was having none of it. I sighed. Peter? I whispered as softly as I could. The dog immediately shot upright and bolted towards me. Bar! Sorry, I couldn't make that out, I replied. The dog dropped the ball in front of me. Bark! Of course I'm going to throw it again. It's sort of part of the game, I said while trying to find the spots on the ball that weren't covered in saliva. I threw it and the dog shot after it again. It tracked the ball down in the living room and once again sat and chewed on it. Muffin? When I heard no reply, the tiny optimist that still lived in me finally gave her last breath. Peter? I said grudgingly and was immediately punished with the sound of dog paws on the carpet. It came and proudly dropped the ball in front of me. You're a bastard, you know that? Bark! I took the dog into my lap and stroked its fur as it settled in. You want to be called Peter? Fine. Just know that I'm doing it grudgingly, okay? Bark! Because calling you Peter reminds me of Alex, and how I can never win against him. The worst part is, he was right. I can't look at you without thinking of him. And yes, he wants me to go out with him on Friday, but I can't. Bark! 
Oh, what do you know? Go sniff some other dog's butt. Must be easy to cut through all the social obligations. Bark! What do you mean there's social nuances that I'm not aware of? Seems pretty straight cut to me. Bark! Whoa. Okay, you're right. I wasn't even aware there was a caste system, let alone how they interact. And you say there are sub-castes within different breeds? Are breed and caste always related? Bark! I think you're just ranking French poodles at the bottom because you're English. You know, you don't have to hate the French just because you're English, right? Bark! Well, putting aside the great tail-wagging incident of 1745 for a moment, I think the feud wouldn't have lasted as long as it has if there wasn't at least a little bit of blind hatred behind it. But far be it from me to tell you who to hate. I hate everyone. Bark! Same reason I can't go out with Alex on Friday. Self-defense, I guess. Bark? Well, I know what he's trying to do. I also know that he's going to fail. I can't win against him, but he can't win against me either. We'll forever stay at a stalemate, and he will feel as if he failed. He will blame himself, and it will destroy him. I'm being mean to him because I want to shut him down early. It's for his own good. Bark. I know what I am. I've accepted where I am. Alex is trying to turn me into him. I will never be him, but it's the only way he thinks he can help me. He only knows one way of being happy, but it doesn't work for me. It's best I save us both some hurt and drive him away while there is still a chance. He left once. No reason he can't do it again. Bark! I sighed. Well, it's a little hard to explain, but let's just say that the world was created in such a way to prevent me from being truly happy, and if I ever try, I will get shut down before I even get to the door. Dark! Yeah, that was dark. I'm sorry to offload on you like this, but you didn't seem busy. And you are my little muffin. Grrr. Peter. Bark. I won't wear it out. Bark. Yeah, sure. I'll throw it again. End of chapter two.